What's going on guys? We're back here again today. Welcome back to the channel Savage Panda Projects, the habitat for power. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about H&R Sports Springs and how they're holding up after one year of driving. Let's get to it. All right, what's going on guys? So we are back here again for another discussion. So as you saw by the title, we're doing a follow-up as far as the overall satisfaction with the H&R Sports Springs on our project A3. As you guys know, we've had these springs on the car for just over a year now, and I would say overall, they've been a pretty good upgrade. It's really hard to beat them for the money. You can pick up a set for around 230, 250 bucks, give or take, and it really does a great job as far as bringing your vehicle down to an attractive ride height, eliminating a lot of that factory wheel gap associated with many of these economical sedans. So I think the question often goes back and forth, the, the debate for coilovers versus lowering springs. And as I've mentioned before, it really just depends on what's important to you. I think if you've got a relatively new car that's in good running condition, that's fairly low mileage, if you're going to reuse the stock shocks, I think you can do the springs and have pretty decent results. Now, if your car's got some age, you've got some mileage, and it's, it's about time for a, a complete overhaul just to refresh everything, and you also value adjustability to fine tune the suspension with a set of coilovers, I do think it does make sense to put forth a little bit more coin, if the budget will allow, and invest into a good quality set of aftermarket coilovers. So as far as performance, handling upgrades, a lot of guys will want to know what am I going to expect out of the driving characteristics with the springs. I do notice that the car, it does feel more balanced, a little bit more planted with the aftermarket springs. I would say that the H&R Sport Springs do complement the aftermarket sway bars very nicely. Once again, the vehicle is, is more planted, there's less body roll, feels less of that, that kind of sloshy bowl of water feeling in the turns. So I think really at the very minimum, springs and sway bars are going to be enough to bring your car to a happy stance that does handle reasonably well. Now, another common question I get asked all the time is, should I go with H&R Sport Springs or Super Sport Springs? H&R Sport Springs are gonna give you about one and a quarter inch of drop. So I think that's a good stance, not getting too low, nothing too aggressive. You're not gonna have any scraping or rubbing problems. That gives you a little bit of room if you decide you wanna add like maybe an aftermarket splitter or something of that sort. This car has already got the S-Line package, so it has the slightly more aggressive bumper from factory, so I'm happy with that as is. A lot of guys out there are definitely gonna be looking to add some different carbon bits here and there, so that of course depends on the person. But as far as the Super Sport Springs, they're going to get more aggressive at around 1.7, 1.8 inch drop, which is a bit aggressive for me. And I really think that's going to expedite the wear and tear in your shocks much more dramatically over the standard Sport Springs. At that point, I really feel that if you're wanting to go that low, you really just need to accept the upfront cost of going coilovers. So another point of discussion when making the move into a set of springs is, should we run the stock shocks or should we go ahead and pick up an aftermarket set, for example, like a set of Bilsteins? Well, once again, you gotta look at the cost. You buy a set of springs, figure 250 bucks. A lot of the Bilstein shocks can run you anywhere from around 500, 600 bucks, give or take, just depending on market price and availability. So that right there, combining the cost of both of those products, you're already at an entry level cost for a set of coilovers. There are reasonably priced options out there, whether it be ST, KW, B14s, if you can get your hands on them. So you gotta think about too, what are you gonna be doing with the car? Is it a daily driver? How much are you gonna really push the car? Now, in my case, I'm not that cool, guys. I'm just an average everyday guy that wants to have the most fun with my car. I'm not tracking the car, just want a little bit more of an aggressive stance as most people would expect with any of these vehicles. At the end of the day, for the Audi A3 with H&R Sport Springs, it really sits around somewhere in the ballpark of the stance of a stock S3. A lot of you guys would still probably want something lower. I don't like my cars that low. I like to preserve ride quality. I don't want my vehicle to be slammed. I'm just not that guy. So you also have to think about what are your realistic expectations and how do you intend to use the car? I personally think if you're gonna do springs, I really don't think it's worth it to upgrade the shocks. I mean, if you look at the cost, as I mentioned before with the Bilsteins, you're gonna probably spend somewhere in the ballpark around 500, 600 bucks as far as the, the full set of shocks to complete the setup. You add that with the cost of the springs as well as labor, alignment, you're right there with coilovers. So I really think if your car is in good running order, rock the springs, keep them on there for a good amount of time. If you start to notice some wear and tear of the shocks, not the end of the world, you can always replace a set. 
And at that point, if you decide, you know what, I want a little bit more of an aggressive stance. I want to have a little bit more adjustability. I want to be able to fine tune the suspension. Then at that point, if you want to move into coilovers, by all means. Just wanted to take the time to cover that. It's a common question I get all the time. I really appreciate you guys reaching out, sending the DMs, leaving the comments. I'm always happy to help out. If I can speak from firsthand experience modifying this platform, always glad to help you out, point you in the right direction if I can. So ultimately, I think the conclusion here is springs are a great cost-effective solution. If you've got some deeper pockets, you can do the adjustability. If the budget allows to do the coilovers, I'd probably go ahead and stick with the coilovers. But one year of driving, I think the springs are holding up okay. I may take a look at something else down the road. We'll see how everything goes with future upgrades on this platform. But for now, I'm gonna stick with the springs and call it a day. <laughs> Gotta love that open box intake. So much whooshiness. Super entertaining. <sighs> Gotta get some pops and bangs in there for you. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below, what suspension are you running on your vehicle? If you're going with springs, coilovers, what brand did you go with, and how are you satisfied with your particular upgrade? So that's gonna go to wrap it up for today's video, guys. Make sure to hit the video with a thumbs up, subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.